This video is for members and I've done this video differently and I would love your feedback and comments. One, I did all the shots live with AK video and then I did narration after the fact. That's not normally how I do things, but I did it this way just to get your feedback on that. I also am doing dynamic captions. Half of our audience is probably English as a second language. This could be too irritating. I don't know. So your feedback would be greatly appreciated. And any other comments while you have a video just for you, put them in that comment section. Any feedback, any ideas, any thoughts would be appreciated. Now, this is the Raspberry Pi version 5. You can see the board is incredibly small, full of features. This will run two 4K monitors. Took seven years of development from the Raspberry Pi version 4 and was a $25 million investment to get that small PCB board. What I'm doing right now is I'm actually adding a NVMe hard drive small daughter board that's going to go onto the bottom of my Raspberry Pi 5. My CPU cooler here close to the bottom of the frame, I'm going to mount that CPU cooler because you really can't run this Raspberry Pi version 5 without a CPU cooler. The chips just get too hot. I'm trying to get that NVMe screw that's micro size and really challenging to get into a, especially a tight position if you have ever tried to put an NVMe hard drive screw in when the motherboard is in the case good luck really a pain but fortunately I have a bench and it's easily accessible but it's still a pain to get that tiny screw in and it varies some some screws are more difficult than others this board sits on the bottom of the Raspberry Pi, and if you'll notice those two golden standoffs, they're, they're copper standoffs, and they touch power on the I.O. riser. There's an I.O. riser, I, I think it's 34 pins. I don't remember off the top of my head, but there's two gold contacts that come up and touch the bottom of that Raspberry Pi 5 board and they actually give the bottom board voltage and ground. So here I'm trying to figure out the flexible data cable that goes from the Raspberry Pi connector down to the NVMe hard drive PCB board. And it is quite painful to get it in. There I made the connection. You want to make sure you get those flexible cables in correctly because if you get them at an angle and you lock it down, you're going to cross short those golden fingers. So those cables have small golden connectors. And if you have that flexible cable into the socket at an angle, they're going to touch more than one connector and you could have a ground to power and short out the board you'll definitely have a signal to ground or a signal to signal and it could be a, a real problem. Now this kit that allows me to mount the NVMe hard drive comes with a series of screws. It's pretty nice little kit because it came with just about everything that I needed to mount that NVMe hard drive to the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. It gives me huge storage options. Although I'm running the Raspberry Pi OS on an SD card that mounts right on the bottom of the Raspberry Pi main circuit board. You can see I here I'm tightening those up and we'll probably speed this up. As always when you're dealing with printed circuit boards always just firmly seat the screws. Don't get aggressive and torque down those screws too hard because you've got multiple layers on that circuit board and you'll actually crush the board. So just snug and that's it. So you can see the golden fingers that come up from the NVMe board 
and touch power and ground on that IO riser. Pretty interesting. Again, you can see the connector that goes from the NVMe hard drive up to the Pi 5 PCB board IO riser. This particular Raspberry Pi runs off 5 volts, 3 amps. So I would probably buy a USB-C power supply for this Raspberry Pi a little higher than 3 amps. If you start adding any more features to this Raspberry Pi, you probably want more than 3 amps. So there's the connector on the bottom of the NVMe pr printed circuit board. And I've got to flip that flexible cable and get it into that connector. And it's got to be just right. You want to make sure it goes in nice and firm and then you can tighten up the plastic friction plate. You don't want it in that connector at an angle. Notice I'm tugging on that flexible cable to make sure that it's seated and held properly. I want to make sure that friction plate is holding that cable in nice and firm. For an $80 board, it's pretty amazing. There's two holes on the Pi 5 printed circuit board and that's where those plastic clips are going to go in and clip the cooler onto the chips. You've got three major chips on that board. That cooler is actually going to have some thermal pads that are going to connect to all three of those chips and it's going to keep that system cool. Don't run it without the cooler. There's, I'm taking off the protection plate for the thermal pads and there's two plastic plungers that go down and lock into the printed circuit board and hold that CPU cooler in place. You want to make sure that those plastic plungers go all the way down and lock into place because it's got to have a little bit of pressure to hold that heat sink in. Now it's firmly locked in place. The CPU cooler is in place. I have to apply power to the fan. That took me a while to figure out where to put that fan. It took me a while to figure out where to apply power for the CPU cooler fan. It wasn't readily visible because it actually had a cover over the top. So I had to download the manual for the CPU cover and then I saw where the actual jack for the fan power was at. Here I actually figured out how to plug in power and you can see the connector for the CPU fan. Should have been simple but it took me way too long for that one. I've actually booted the Pi up with the Raspberry Pi OS is actually a form of Debian Linux and it was amazing. For the money, this is a lot of fun and a very powerful computer. Definitely worth the investment. Raspberry Pi version 5. Make sure you buy a CPU cooler. A large SD card that's fast. That's all you'll need really. You can do a lot with just the SD card and have a lot of fun with Raspberry Pi.